How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Ruffle Rowlett, and today on the channel, I want to give you guys the top 10 best Pokemon ROM hacks you guys can play going into 2024 and throughout the year. So, if you guys are ready, let's get started. First up is going to be Pokemon Uval. Now, Pokemon Uval is a crazy game, and it is pretty large as well. It just had its beta version 2 actually release, and it's highly inspired by the events and stories in Pokemon X and Y and the anime. Basically, you're going to be going to a whole different universe than the one that Kalos took place in, and you're going to be exploring around and taking on different challenges. You're going to be going to the Makva region, which will have five Mega Evolution gurus who will watch you with care and help you be stronger. Now, if you manage to do all their trials, they will then challenge you, which kind of works like the Grand Trials of Alola. They will use very strong Pokemon, also Mega Evolve their Pokemon, in battle. So yes, you will have a friendly rival that's going to be Serena. So yes, there are a few relations to the previous stuff. Now, the game does have pretty great graphics. It does kind of mix that Gen 3 and Gen 4 art style into it, but that's not all. Here are the following features. You got Mega Evolution, a brand new region, Hidden Grosso's, 251 catchable Pokemon the Pokedex, the Gen 5 soundtrack, Shiny Riolu starter Pokemon, if you want that, Gen 8 EXP on everything, Gen 5 Repel System, the Poison Survival Mode is in here for some reason, I hate that part myself, Sideways Stairs, Pokemon from Gen 1 to 8, Generation 4 and 5 Mixture Textures, as well as new Mega Evolved Pokemon, and also regional forms from Alola, Galar, and even Paldea. Yes, you also have Trials instead of Gym Leaders, and you have side quests as well, which are always fun to do, with black and white battle text box in there too. And finally, three rivals and mystery gifts. So yeah, the game does come with a lot of different stuff. It is a more recent game, so there might be, you know, some issues. If you run into any issues, you can always just contact the developers. But the beta is now out. It's beta 2. Definitely give it a try. Pokemon Mirage of Tales. I cannot stress how good this game is. You guys don't understand. This game has been reworked from pretty much almost scratch. Like, the original version is pretty much gone now, and they reworked this thing, and it's been worked on since almost 2013. So it's been in the works for a long, long, long time, and the developer has managed to make such a great progress. Now, basically, in this game, you have a very strange situation because you've got a ROM hack where you can take on multiple different roles, okay? Multiple different roles. And this game has evolved so much from the past, but basically you have different careers. At the start of the game, you're going to be able to do different uh, classes and different things that will basically decide on each profession and what you want to be. You can either be a trainer, which is the default profession. You're basically automatically given this title just day one of your graduation in the game. And this is just a standard thing to play as. So if you want to just play the game like a regular Pokemon game, you can do this. Then there's also the rogue class, which specifically is trainers that want to kind of do a bit more criminal stuff and be their own bosses. So if you want to be a rogue, you got to do some small crimes before you can get it. Then, of course, there is the Ranger class. Now, Ranger is basically, well, think of the Rangers from the actual Pokemon games. You're going to be just protecting the endangered Pokemon, protecting Pokemon from villains and stuff along those lines. So it's just a lot of stuff like that. And then finally, there is also researchers. So you join the research teams, you become a researcher similar to Professor Oak, and your most important goal, get that data for the Pokedex. So this is a really cool game. Like I said, it has a lot of features, like a choice-based gameplay system. So every decision you make in the game actually matters. Like, it matters what you do. What you actually decide to do in the game makes a big impact. But there's also other stuff. You got different seasons, day and night cycle, an alignment system. So your actual personality will match to the choices you make. So all of it's connected. You also have overworld wild Pokemon, just like in Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. So you'll see them in the actual world. Houses, which you can own. So yes, there is housing systems in this game, which is why I say it's one of the best ones you can play. To definitely play this one. There's new moves and abilities all the way to Gen 7. The physical special status splits are here and fairy types. Over 100 custom items and also custom berries a custom regional variant for different Pokemon, and a regional Pokedex. There is so many more secrets that you guys just need to explore yourself in Pokemon Mirage of Tales. So definitely go give it a try, check it out, and have fun. Then we have Pokescape. Now, this one is a bit funny, but Pokescape is based on the MMORPG RuneScape. Now, if you guys have been playing RuneScape, then this game might be a little bit uninteresting to you, but I still think it's interesting nonetheless, though. Now, this basically contains the story and parts of the, I guess, real RuneScape game, which have now been replaced by Pokemon. So basically, the story and region is based on the content of the Gale Neor in RuneScape. I could have been totally butchering that. There's an evil team called HAM or HAM. There are over 900 plus custom RuneScape monsters that have been made into Pokemon monsters, over 100 plus trainer sprites, and 200 plus overworld sprites. There's custom music, 
unique branching evolutions, a special battle engine, which contains all moves and abilities up to Gen 7 of Pokemon. There's, of course, the casual, you know, physical special split status stuff. That's there too, as per usual. Braiding, breeding mechanics is another one. Two game modes, open world and story mode. So you have the ability of either just going out and exploring or following the story. Now that isn't really completed yet, but it's in the works. There's also Mega Evolutions, that's great. And HMs are replaced with key items. There's just a few of the things you will find, but honestly, this game is just insane, man. So if you are a RuneScape fan, you will love this. Otherwise, it may not be the most enjoyable thing in the world for you, but otherwise, like, if you are into RuneScape, you'll love it. So this next game is Pokemon Emerald Horizons, which is pretty freaking huge. Now, this game is a massive one. It's developed by Brandon XL, and he has been working hard on this game. Now, it's been updated in 2023 with a lot of different stuff. It's basically a ROM hack set around Emerald, but what it does is it changes a lot of stuff. It changes up a bit of the story, it adds in a bunch of Pokemon, and also changes up some of the graphics to make things look a little bit more dandy and nice. But basically, this game is a massive feature-filled version of Emerald, and I'm going to be playing it like this, okay? It is a difficulty ROM hack, right? So it does increase the difficulty, where it basically it sits at about a 6 on the difficulty scale, if you're going to put it like that. Uh, it also streamlines the player experience and aligns a lot of features to be similar to the more modern games. So for example, you have a set mode, level caps, you can disable battle bag. There's a lot of stuff like that to make it more hard. Uh, most of the Gen 1 to 8 Pokemon obtainable, including Hisuian forms. You also have a more modern battle engine, including fairy types, mega evolution, updated movesets, and physical special split. Loads of optional bosses that you can do, like boss battles with the eight Kanto gym leaders, the eight Johto ones, and a few miscellaneous bosses here and there. So you can even battle, like, I think, red, which is a spoiler. Ooh. But you also have EXP all on, so you can also get experience and everything if you don't want to be grinding individual Pokemon. There are bosses and mid-late game trainers to scale to a relative, like, you know, way to your, like, actual strengths and levels. So grinding and overleveling isn't really an issue. Also, there are updated move animations. There's just a lot of stuff. Like, I can't even go through the list. There's just so many things in this game. There's even a post-game boss rush mode, so that's even crazy. But basically, this game is filled to the brim with content. There is a original Team Rocket storyline, a level cap window update as you progress, no more annoying fishing minigames for some reason, and just loads of other stuff to make the whole experience way better. Also, did I mention there are a lot of cool mythical and legendary Pokemon you can encounter and cool characters that you normally don't encounter and see. But yes, ladies and gentlemen, if you are ready, then go check out Pokemon Emerald Horizons. It is a freaking smack full game of awesome features. Next up, we have Pokemon Ancient Ruby and Ancient Sapphire. These are actually based on an old game called Ancient Emerald. But basically, what is the story here? Well, basically, the game starts off with the paraphrase of the original box blurb. So, immerse yourself in a beautiful region of Hoenn, a place of masterful heroes and mysterious teams, of friendship and even battles. As a new kid in town, you set off on your journey as a Pokemon trainer. Who knows what wonders and dangers await you? Now it's time to grab your gear and head out of your own. So basically, what is this game all about? Well, in this game, you've got loads of features, but the art style is made to look like the art style from Generation 2. So you'll be playing through Ruby and Sapphire, but everything looks like you're playing Johto and you're playing Gold, Silver, Crystal. And that's, I think, the most awesome part about this game is that it just looks exactly like Ruby and Sapphire, but it's a different art style. And it just gives you a new fresh feeling. And I don't like to be stupid to say fresh feeling to an old school looking game, but I think it's nonetheless like really freaking awesome. Like genuinely, this is just fantastic. And honestly, I think you guys should check it out. Now, in terms of some of the features, you have running shoes in this one, which is normally something you wouldn't have. Uh, you got priority tiles allowing the players to walk under buildings and bridges. 60 frames a second uh, from Pokemon Orange, so it's a ported version of uh, Prism, I guess, Pokemon Prism. Hoenn decks plus extras found in battles or extra content from Emerald and Oras, so 253 Pokemon in total. A completely devamped Ruby and Sapphire soundtrack. Bonus constant based on the e-reader cards from an Oras. Dive and Rock Climb are in here. Various Gen 2 fixes. Stats based on Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald. And basically, it's Gen 3 but in Gen 2 graphics. So it's a bit of a mix of everything in one. And honestly, it is so freaking cool. You guys need to give this one a look and try it out. 
Pokemon Odyssey is the next game on this list, and it is a game that was made in a while ago, and it's a crossover project between two games, Pokemon Made in Abyss and Etrian Odyssey. So it's basically a little bit of a mix of those into the Pokemon world. So it's kind of a mixture of all those. It's sort of a dungeon crawler story driven game, but you don't really need to know anything about those previous things I mentioned to actually understand the story of this game. Now, what is it all about? Well, the art style does follow that Gen 4, Gen 3 mix. So the characters may look a little bit more Gen 4 styled, but the actual world is more in that Gen 3 like kind of design. And overall, the graphics in this game are mwah, fan freaking tastic. Okay. There's nothing negative to say about this game. It just looks amazing. Now, once you go into the game, you have a lot of things to do. First of all, what is the world about? Well, you're going to be traveling around as well, Nyx. Nyx is a young adventurer that also wants to challenge the Yggdrasil Labyrinth and good at Pokemon battles is what she is and tries to follow in her sister's footsteps in order to surpass her and her signature Pokemon are Plusle and Minon. And yes, you're going to be going out there and exploring. There's loads of different things you can do. New story and region, double battles only, unless you have only one Pokemon. Uh, no gym leader, an evil team, Elite Four. It's time to just explore. Every Pokemon has been rebalanced. New regional forms, the Etrian variants. There are also Pokemon from Gen 1 to Gen 3 and Gen 4 evolutions. Also, there's extras like Ferragiraffe from Generation 9. There are multiple difficulties and soft level caps as well. So if you want to have it a bit more difficult, you can do that. And overall, the game is just filled with a lot of small features like mining, gathering points, naval exploration, shop upgrades, and just loads of other stuff like side quests. So you have a whole side quest menu. And of course, if you guys like Wonder Trade, the game does have Wonder Trade. So yes, it's loads of crazy stuff like that. The game is feature filled and graphically it is one of the most like, I don't know, beautiful looking games that we've covered on this list. It just looks really nice. It just looks really appealing to the eyes and it's definitely a game you guys should give a try. You've probably seen a few people play it, but I'd give it definitely a chance. Next, we have Pokemon Elysium. Now, Elysium is a strange game. So this is a game that was made by BL Kaiser and it's a game that is uh, quite interesting. It's a story and lore focused Fire Red ROM hack for more casual players. It was developed years ago and has been kind of added to over time. It's a game all about the adventure of a 16-year-old girl from the peaceful island of Krista. She's on a journey to become a Pokemon champion, aiming to secure one of the eight spots in the final sets of the mysterious Elysium Island, I guess, tournament. However, unbeknownst to her, an ancient dark presence is setting in motion a plan of more than 100 years in the making. So yes, it is a story-driven game. It's a mix of Pokemon that happens in here, like Pokemon and just story-driven stories. So you've got a mix of Pokemon, moves and types up until generation six, so X and Y. You also have a mix of gen one, gen two, gen three, uh, different Pokemon in here. So you have a little bit of a uh, kind of variety in what you can actually use. There are fairy type Pokemon that moves in here too. The physical special split is here too. A very story oriented game, uh, but also does have some fake and fake and moves in there. So there is going to be some of that stuff. If you don't like it, maybe it's not for you, but the game does also have side quests, which will reward you with rare Pokemon moves or even special items. So if you guys are looking for a bit of a random game that gives you that fire red old school feeling, then this might be the game for you. It's going to be Pokemon Saffron version. Now, Pokemon Saffron is honestly one of the best looking ROM hacks that are out there at the moment, in my opinion. And one game that actually doesn't get enough credit. The game did get updated recently and it continuously is being updated. I think its recent update just came out. So it is a sick game. It has loads of features and I'm going to go through some of them. First of all, you're going to be going over to the Namia region. Now, the Namia region has varying terrain and also is the home of many species of Pokemon. This is because a lot of Pokemon across the globe will migrate here. And once every decade, the migration paths sync up, causing the region to get a massive increase and just skyrocket in different Pokemon populations. So trainers, gym leaders, professors, all kinds of people will show up and try their hand at competing here. And you are going to be going into a journey with your companion Eevee. But that's not all. The game features loads of other stuff, a fresh experience. So every user interface... Is that a massive upgrade or visually been changed and made more functional? There is still that Generation 3 art style, but the actual graphics just look so freaking good in this game and how much they've improved them here. But that's not all. They've also improved the battle engine, adding brand new interfaces and also changing the backgrounds to give you unique special backgrounds for every location you battle in. And again, the features continue. You have mini games, for example, you could be making cookies, you could be mixing, mining, slot machines, whatever you guys can imagine. There are special locations all across the lead region we can go and do this. You can even blend berries for specifically to make different berry mixes for your Pokemon. And there's also the Pokedex, the Dex Nav, the World Map, etc., which are all available in your Pocket Looking app. So again, 
a revitalized version of all these features. They're all back, and this game is fantastic. If you guys want to follow the actual progress on it, I think it's got to be getting its first release very, very soon. You guys can get over to their Discord down below. I'll be maybe linking it so you guys can go there. But yeah, definitely check out Pokemon Saffron into 2024. Next up, we have Pokemon Team Rocket, Jesse and James. The game I actually played on the channel previously, and it's a pretty cool game. Basically, you get to adventure around as Jesse and James from Team Rocket and carry out different missions that have been assigned to you by none else than Giovanni. The game will feature both the Kanto, Johto, and Hoenn region. You've got the black and white repel system. You've got Mega Evolutions, Day-Night Cycle, and loads of other stuff. This is basically the quintessential game if you want to be a part of Team Rocket. Yes, it is pretty crazy. I'm not going to lie, but it's also pretty awesome. And that's kind of what makes this game a worthwhile investment if you want to play something that really makes you feel like Team Rocket. So yes, definitely a worthwhile game and one you should 100% check out. Finishing off the list, we have Pokemon Scythe 2. Yes, this is taking place after about three years of the story and the events of Pokemon Scythe, the first game. And yes, this is also part of the Pokemon Scythe and Swords series. So this is a game that is related to other games, which gives you enough of a reason to check it out, in my opinion. Basically, you're going to be discovering a new region. It's the Regis region. And here, you're going to be discovering a lot of different new things. There is a improved battle system, so the AI are going to be very difficult. The graphics of this game are, once again, fan-freaking-tastic. Like the Scythe series and just the, the Swords series and those games have always just looked really fantastic. This game is based on Emerald, but the art style still gives off that Gen 4 feeling, as a lot of the sprites use are Gen 4 sprites. And even the world looks more like Gen 4-esque, but it is a Emerald hack. But that's not all. The game has loads of little missions and features. Currently, there are secondary missions, only one in the demo version. There is a deck snap feature that's currently not in the current version, but there will be eventually. The game also features different game modes, randomizer, level scaling, modern EXP, you know, rep. So you got loads of different options and stuff like that. And also, because of the CFRU as a game engine, finally, they're going to be able to have special ways of doing things in this game. So loads of features. The story is going to be interesting for you as well if you played the previous games. And if you haven't, check those out too because it will definitely help you going into this game. But nonetheless, it is still a self-contained story that should be enjoyable. So ladies and gentlemen, Poco Pokemon Scythe 2, check it out. But that's not all, guys. I want to quickly mention here, if you guys want to find all these games and links to them, I'll be linking them over on our Discord. So check the link in the description down below to join our Discord server. And that way, if you join it, You'll be able to get your hands on all these games that I'll be linking in the video or that I've been talking about in the video. That's the best way to go in and get your hands on these games. Just go to the link down below to our Discord, join the Discord server, and go right here to the section called Fan Game Downloads. If you go there, you'll see a list that I've posted of all the games I just covered. You'll see all of them listed there. You can just go through and click the link to the game you want. So that's it. Thank you all for watching.